Hey guys and welcome back to another Engine 4 tutorial. Today I'm going to be creating a day and night cycle. In this we're going to be creating the cycle so it goes from day to night and you can change the speed or the day length and then in the future I'm going to be advancing on this to also make it so you have the time written down and you have days so it keeps track and I'm also going to be adding on saving the time, the day, all of that good stuff. But again that latter part is not in today's video. So let me hit play and I'll show you what we're going to make today. So you can see we can get in, it's currently day, the sun is going to move around, rotate, and as it goes down, the lighting will change. We get this nice sunset, and it's going to get a bit darker. And then eventually, when we wait long enough, the sky will turn to stars as well, so it's proper nighttime. And then it's very dark as well here. As we wait even longer, the sun will rise again, we'll come back up, the lighting will change as it's going to get lighter again, and this will work perfectly for us. And again, it's very easy to customize different things. So if you want it to get lighter sooner, you want it to get like darker quicker anything along those lines and of course we're going to make it so this can be different speeds as well so the day isn't this long because obviously in a game you want it to be a lot longer this was just so i can show you very easily so now earlier i tried many many different ways of doing this and i did a lot of different maths until i realized it wasn't really that necessary so i've completely changed what i was doing so i spent quite a while earlier doing this to then just redo it and come up with a much better way but without further ado let me delete this code and i'll show you how i've done it so the first thing we want to do is we want to select our light source. So for me that's here, and you'll see it's just a nice little sun with an arrow coming off it here. It's not the sun, but it's an icon of a sun. What we want to do is we want to change it from stationary to mobile, so the mobility is mobile, so that way we can move it and rotate it using blueprints, because as you can see here, we can rotate it like so. While we're rotating it, I also want to make sure it is pointing directly down, so the Y is going to be a minus 90. The reason I'm doing that is just so it starts at midday and it goes around like that as it just makes it easy for us to do. So I'm going to be doing that. And obviously you can change anything else on here you want, for example the intensity, but everything else I'm leaving the as default, but you want to make sure that you have it as movable. So this directional light we can change the direction of because then that's obviously going to change where the sun is. So again as an example, if we rotate it, you can see the light is changing as the sun rotates. Again, that's going to be good. What we're going to do next is open up our level blueprint as that's where we're going to do this code. So we can go to blueprints, open level blueprint. Very, very simple. Then in here, I'm going to set up actually moving the sun. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click, add a custom event, and I'm going to name this one time cycle. You can name it day, night cycle, or move sun, anything along those lines. And what we want to do is get a reference to our light source as that's what we want to move. So I'm just going to double click the top there to minimize it a bit select our light source and then in the world outline up here I'm going to drag and drop it into the level blueprint like so. With this I'm going to drag out this reference and I'm going to add actor local rotation because we want to rotate it connecting that into the time cycle there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click delta rotation and split the structure pin because we only want to rotate it on the Y because again if you see this when we rotate it we're rotating the Y there as that's the one we want to change to have it rotating perfectly around the world. Go back in here, we only want to mess about with that. X and Z will leave a zero. And to figure out how much we want to rotate it by, what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click, get world delta seconds, like so. So that's basically getting the frame delta, so the time in between each frame. So yeah, there returns the frame delta time in seconds. And then we come out the return value, we're going to get a float multiplied by a float. And we want to multiply this by a new float variable of speed so we can change how long this will take. So we can right click that, promote to variable, naming this speed. And then we can compile and change the default value. Just to test this out, I'm going to have it as 30. That's quite fast. I think that's what I was using the start. Uh, so obviously you'd want this to be a lot shorter. But again, just to show you for the purpose of this and for testing, this is a good value. Return value of this is obviously going to go into the Y of the add actor local rotation there. And again, we can increase or decrease the speed to change the speed of the day-night cycle. And so now this is going to actually work. So this is going to change the lighting. However, it's not going to actually move the sun. So to do that, we just need to refresh the material. So a way to do that via blueprints is to again minimize this, select our sky sphere. So we just select the sky, drag our sky sphere blueprint in here like so. Drag this under here. Out of this, we're going to not refresh material. That's just something you tick in the details. We're going to instead update sun direction connecting that into there like so as so now this is going to work perfectly for us to actually have a day night cycle 
However, we need to make this into a loop. So you can use event tick, however this is slightly more efficient. So what I'm going to do is hold down D, left click to get a delay, connecting that to the update sun direction with a duration of 0.01. Out completed, I'm going to think in call function time cycle, just so it loops like this. And then off of event begin play, we need to call this to start with. So we can hold down P, left click to get event begin play. Out of this, call function time cycle. And so now this will give us a basic day night cycle. So we're going to compile, hit play, and we can see this working. You can see the sun is moving around, giving us the, the sunset, sunrise, night sky, all of this good stuff, and it is actually moving as well, perfectly like so. However, you can see the lighting isn't really changing that much. So the lighting is changing, sorry, but the brightness isn't. So it's just as bright during the night as it is during the day, which obviously we don't really want because during the night it gets quite dark. So to solve that, it's very simple, and I'm going to delete the delay and time cycle there, so we just have this code again. So what we want to do is hold down B and left click to get a branch, connecting that into there like so, because we want to check to see whether or not it is sunset or sunrise, because we don't want to just be changing it throughout the whole day, I want to change it when the brightness should change, i.e. if it's day or night. So we're going to come out of the light source over here again, and get actor rotation, right click the return value, split structure bin, because again, we only want the Y or the pitch. Out of the Y, what we're going to do is we're going to get a float is less than a float. And also a float is greater than a float. Because we want to see if it's between two values. Because using equal equal is good. However, this is working a bit too fast for that to be able to keep up with it. So it doesn't recognize it and fire off. And then we're going to connect both of these up with an AND boolean. So they both have to be true. So it has to be below this value and above this value, so it's in between them. And the end is gonna go into the condition of that branch there. What I'm gonna do for sunset, so it gets darker, is I'm gonna have it less than 75 and greater than 65. So anywhere between these two values is when it's gonna get darker. Now let's also set up getting lighter. So I'm gonna hold down B, left click to get another branch, connecting that into the false of the first branch. And we can just duplicate the less than, greater than, and end as you wanna use them again. So select them, control C, control V, and goes into condition, and these values go into the Y of there once again. Now these ones, I'm gonna set it to be less than minus zero and greater than minus 15. So let me show you where this is gonna be in the world. So if I zoom out, the sun set, so it's gonna get darker around this point, because that is roughly also where the sky starts to change into fully night. And then around here is where it's gonna change to be bright again, as that's where the sun starts rising and the sky starts to change once again. So through my testing, I found these to be the best places and best values to have it working perfectly for us to look the best. But again, you can of course change them to get it perfect for you as well. So just have a look at what values you want the rotation to be at for when you want the lighting to change. Again, this one being tonight, this one being today. Obviously by that I mean going tonight and going today. So now let's go back up here. And what we're gonna do is hold down S and left click to get a sequence connecting that into true of the first branch here. Then after that, we're gonna hold down O and left click to get a do once, connecting that into then zero. After the completed of this, what I'm gonna do is add a timeline. And I'm gonna name this one day night cycle timeline. And then I'm gonna double click that to open it up. I'll leave the length as five and I'll add a float track, naming this one cycle track like so. Then on here, I'm gonna right click add a key to curve float, the time of zero, value also of zero, right click, add key to curve float, the time of five, or the maximum length of your timeline, and a value of one. I'm gonna click these to change it, right click on one of the keyframes, change it to auto, right click on the other one, change it to auto, so now we have a nice blend here, like so. So what this is gonna do, is it's gonna take five seconds to have a nice smooth transition from fully nighttime to fully daytime, or fully daytime to fully nighttime. But obviously we will also have the nice smooth transition of the sun moving, which will help with that, but this is the main brightness. And we're gonna compile and close that. And what I'm also gonna do is select the sequence and do once, control C, control V to duplicate them down here, with this one going to the true of the bottom branch, and the completed going to the reverse of the timeline and I will just move these a little bit to make them look a bit nicer and more organized, working perfectly like so. And then the finished of this timeline, we want to hold down S and left click to get another sequence, with then zero going into the reset of the first do once, 
and then one going to the reset to the second do once. I'm just going to click the white execution lines, or double click them, sorry, to get some root nodes, just to keep this looking nice and organized. And so what this means is that it's not going to spam this. So it's only going to do this once, and then when it's finished doing it, it will allow us to do it again. But obviously by that time, it won't need to do it again, because the sun will be in a different position from these values. So this is what's going to actually change us from day and night, brightness-wise. But obviously we need to actually set up those values changing. Well, that's also very simple to do. So what we need to do is minimize this once again, like so. And we need to select our skylight, which for me is down here, or the light source, sorry. Drag and drop that into the level blueprint. And then we also need to get the skylight, which you can find in the world outliner as well. Once again, dragging and dropping that into the level blueprint. Because we need to change the brightness of our light source and also the skylight. So what we're gonna do is drag out of these and just get set intensity. So set intensity light component there, and do the same for skylight. Set intensity out of the light component there, like so. Connect the set intensities together like that, and then also connect the first one into the update of the timeline. So you should have something which looks a little bit like this. And if I move them down as well, it should look like this. So what's gonna happen is every time the timeline updates, so it goes between the different values, it's gonna modify the intensity of our light source and skylight which again is changing the brightness. And the new intensity, we wanna use this cycle track here, but we don't wanna just put it straight in because that's gonna go from zero to one. What we want to do instead is right click and get a LARP and get a LARP under float. We wanna get two of these, so I'm just gonna duplicate that like so. The return value is gonna go into the new intensity of these two there like that. And the alpha is gonna be the cycle track. So a LARP goes between the value of A and B smoothly using the alpha as this timeline track to smoothly go between them. And then we just need to set up our values of A and B. So A is gonna be the daytime brightness and B is gonna be the nighttime brightness. So to check that, we can very simply just once again minimize this, select our light source, and you can see the intensity at the moment is 2.75. So our intensity for day is 2.75. And then for night, what I set it as earlier was 0.1. You can set it to whatever you like, but I think that's a good value. And then we'll do the same for skylight. So if we select the skylight, you see its intensity at the moment, if we search for it here, its intensity is one. So the intensity scale is one. So what I'm gonna do is have that as the daytime brightness. So change A to one there like so, and B I had as 0.01 earlier. Compile and save, and that's it done. Very simply like so, what's gonna happen is it's simply it's gonna move the sun and also at different times of the day, it's gonna change the brightness dependent on that. So if it's nighttime, it's gonna get darker. If it's daytime, it's gonna get brighter. And obviously this timeline is gonna do it over a nice smooth transition like so as well. And again, to make it faster or slower, just change this speed variable here. So the maths I was doing earlier was I was trying to figure out how to change the speed variable, but have it so the timeline also represents that. So I was trying to have it so the timeline is always equal to the day length. And I did manage to get it working, after a few different calculations. However, I didn't really like the effect it gave. But I'll tell you what the calculation was. What I figured it out to be was 100 divided by the speed times by five equals the day length. So let me show you that here. So if I get the speed, we can then also get a divide. So a float divided by a float. With the bottom value being the speed, top value being 100. Out of that, we can get a multiply. So a float multiplied by a float times it by five, and then this value here, the return value, is our day length in seconds. And again, did a few different calculations, and that's how I got it. So the day length in second is the speed divided by 100 times by five. And so I believe as well, if I'm correct, that would mean that to have the day length in seconds as a variable you input, what you do is, let me create that, so let me get day length in seconds, changing this to a float, and compile that. I believe if we get that, you can then input this in seconds. And if we come out of this, what I believe, and I'll correct me if I'm wrong, but we should be able to multiply this, so we get a float multiplied by a float. We want to multiply it by 100, and then multiply that by five. Again, I'm not a math wizard, I'm not a math genius, so if I'm wrong, someone can correct me in the comments, obviously. But again, we're not actually using this, so it doesn't need to be too correct. I'm just showing you, so you have the workings out of what I did, just in case anybody's interested. 
you might not be at all but if you are there you go and also you may want to test this out as well so if you want to have a look into writing in the day length in seconds instead this will be a good start for you so this is equal to the day length in seconds and this I believe would then be equal to the speed again I'm going to delete that as we're not actually using it compile hit play and we can test this out so now the sun isn't moving so let's have a look at why we did that and that's a very simple thing actually what I forgot to do was I forgot to loop this so as you saw at the beginning we had a loop here but I deleted that because we need to add it here as well but I forgot so that's why we have these sequences here so what I'm going to do is out of then one of this sequence I'm going to get a delay the duration is going to be 0 0.01 and out of the completed we're going to call function time cycle not that one that's the timeline sorry call function time cycle so it's the exact same thing we had at the beginning except it's here now instead and I'm going to select that Control c Control v down here connecting that into then one of this sequence instead and then the false of this branch is also going to go in there again I'm going to double click that to get some root nodes so once again now we've created this as a loop so it's always going to be firing off which is again why you could use event tick but custom events are just slightly more efficient so that's why I'm doing it this way instead so now if we hit play we can test this out and you can see the sun is moving and it's moving quite quickly so I don't even see it at that time and this brightness is now also changing you should see the sun should come up there there it is and it flies all the way past with the brightness going up as it goes down the sun sets it gets to night time it's going to get darker and then as it comes back up it's going to be nice and bright again and again if I also just change the speed here to be something a bit lower so let's put it as 10 we can have a look at this and also do the outro so I think that'll be it for this video so we've done everything we've wanted to do We've set it up so we've got a day-night cycle in which we can easily change the speed of the cycle and the sun is going to move around the world as well. We're going to have the sunset, sunrise skies as well and when it gets dark enough we're going to have the nice dark night sky with the stars as well and we can also change the brightness as you saw here. So when it's nighttime, it's going to be darker than when it's daytime. And again it's coming up now, the sun will start to rise and the brightness will start getting brighter as you saw there. So this works perfectly for us. Again, in the future, we're going to be adding on to this so we can keep track of the day and time. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.